Okay, we've let that uh, dry, the first wash. Um, what we need to do now is to mix a much stronger mix of the same colour and build up the form. This is the most time consuming part of botanical illustration. I use a piece of uh, tissue or kitchen roll just to put my hand on so that I don't smudge any of the other work. It's very important. And also, if you walk away from your work, just cover it up so that flies and any debris or anything cannot mark it. So we'll mix this same mix, but much stronger, and go in with the same method as we have done before. This is step number two of the six-step procedure. So we need um, Windsor Red, Opera Rose, much thicker so that we can start and really build up these tones. Once it starts to look three-dimensional, you know that you're getting there. So we're going to start again in this area and go right on the edge, really accurate again. Do not, um, do not go further in uh, than you've painted before. It's sometimes it's easier to just go a little bit further in, so you you know you keep the fine edge that you've already got. But if you do, you you leave a lip, and when you put the paint on, it uh, will leave that lip, and you'll see it. And the more paint you put on the other part of the petal, the lip will increase. So don't think going over it will improve it, because it won't. You need to work accurate on every petal up to the edge all the time. So that's grading quite nicely. As I've said, stroke the paper. Don't use the point of the brush, just what I call dithering about. Just make a nice clean sweep. You'll get a more even wash. And work right into the corners accurately. And you can see now that this area down at the right hand side, right hand bottom, is much darker than this area and it's starting to look rounded and that's exactly what we want to do. I'll work on another one which is, as I've said, an alternate petal so that we can paint it without running in. As I said, accurate to the bottom. You can use your pointed, you needn't use the belly of the brush, you can use the point of the brush. And these SAA Gold round have got a super point, which is beautiful to use. The paper, I've said I've used um, Arches. Um, as long as it's a really good quality paper, that's OK. With it being a very smooth paper, it does absorb very quickly. That's why we have to work very quickly on the gradation. Because if you don't, it will, as I've said, dry, and you won't be able to, to uh, grade it. So we're going on another petal. Again, on the right-hand side, make this your practice to work on the darkest side first and grade it in. Don't leave any gaps. Fill the grain with, of the paper with your paint. Don't leave any, any lines at this stage because if it's a flower petal that doesn't have lines in it, then obviously it doesn't look like the actual flower that you're trying to paint. It can look like something else. Again, grade this off. We're working vertical from top to bottom. We also need to work horizontal because the petal is curved both ways. It's curved from top to bottom and from side to side. This side, on the right hand side of these petals here, will be a little bit lighter than what these are on this side for obvious reasons. It's all to do with the light source. And if you haven't got light, you haven't got shape. So I'll work that down into this one. As I say, be very careful of the sepal. Keep accurate, because we don't want that painting in pink. We need that to be green later. Just keep softening those edges till you get this lovely gradation. If you do get, if it does bleed across a little bit and you get a, a much larger contrast between the dark and the light, just stroke it with your brush and soften it out while it's damp. We don't tend to work in this method wet in wet. Wet in wet, you would leave watermarks and patterns on the petals, which obviously could be uh, misunderstood for the actual venation on the petal. 
So we need to keep it smooth. I'm going to work on this one now, on the left hand side, because it, the light's coming this way. If it's cupped, if it's concaved, the light will catch the right hand side of the petal. So remember that, if it's concaved. If it's convex, going the opposite way, uh, that's a, a different way of, um, of painting. You actually paint both sides of the petal to make it and leave the center light. But these are concave, so we need to make sure that the right hand side looks cupped or it gives the impression of a cup on this side. So I'm doing that now so you'll know that this side is lighter. It's catching the light in this corner here and this area top left is in more shadow. It's an illusion of light. Now on this petal here I'm leaving a very thin uh, line and that is because the petal, the edge of the petal is, is pointing towards me. So it shows the thickness of the actual petal and that's important because they have got a thickness of course. So make sure that this edge here is left unpainted, a very thin line and soften that off as we would all the others, just grade the paint. If you've got too much water, if you get a little puddle, just mop it up with your uh, kitchen roll, your tissue, so that we don't get this wet in wet uh, look. So that's starting to build up now. I'm going to go up this top right, work this one. Okay. You'll get into the technique of just washing your brush into water. Twist it once. I always find that if you twist it once, it still leaves enough water on your brush to grade the paint. If you dip it in the water and go straight in, you'll find that you've got this droplet of water and sometimes that can drop on your painting and make a, a mess or a mark. So that's why. Good tip. Just one one little twist. Okay. Working round to the back side of the flower petal. Left hand side again because they're on the other side. The reason for this, you've got inner and outer petals, and obviously when they're painted correctly, it shows that the old flower is concentric, it's round. Whereas if you paint them all the same, it will be, again, one-sided, as though the flower only has petals one side, not the other, and they're not um, in the correct shape. I'm leaving these, this little edge because it's close to that one and I want to let that one dry. So the little edges just, just leave dry. We can work now on this one, which is away from the others. Most of this is drying quite well and allowing me to paint the alternate petals. Now I can go back into this petal here. I will work that one up a little bit more. Once they start to get formed, they get really interesting and um, you'll enjoy the painting of them. You do go through a stage when nothing really happens and you think it's not working, but keep going because it will work because the more paint there is on in the right area, the more form that you'll gain. I'll work this other petal now. Keeping up there. This one, not quite as dark. We can go a little bit darker, but not quite as dark because it's in more light than these on the right hand side. I can't emphasize this enough because it's easy to get carried away and paint them all the same tone. And that, of course, is, is no good at all. I'm just going to quickly mix a little bit more paint. I'm telling you to mix plenty of paint, and I'm not doing it myself. So we'll, it's the same color again. Just get some more pink in there. Opera Rose. We'll go in once again down here. We can start and go darker go quite dark in here, start and build up the shadows which are in the darkest areas. And of course, when you do put the thicker paint on as well, with paint already being gone, it gets more intense. 
and it obviously stands out more and starts to get really interesting. Build this one up right into the bottom there so that it's nice and accurate with your point. Then as you can see, this is starting to get three dimensional. We'll work on this one, really much darker. We're getting up to the color that the actual flower is, which is this lovely pinky red. They do vary, and I would advise you to obviously mix your color to the plant. Um, they're not all the same, they do vary. They vary on um, position in the garden. They also vary on different varieties. So do get the color right and mix your colors before you start. Going really neat into those corners. I can't emphasize that enough. I know I keep saying it, but you must keep really neat and go really crisp into the, into the corners. So there we go, just that one's nearly finished. We'll work on this, the back of this one again. It does dry much lighter. So when you put your paint on, uh, don't think you've, you know, sometimes gone too dark because it does dry much lighter um, than you think. It's, um, that's why we let it dry for another reason. And we'll do that when we've completely dry, when the old process, this second process has been achieved. So we need to go darker on this one again. Once you start and get more paint on, it actually grades much easier. It's smoother because you're when you think about it, you're actually filling the tooth or the patterning of the grain of the paper with paint. So it's building up so that it gets a bit smoother. So makes it a bit easier and obviously if the shapes come in at the early stages when you get these first washes on then it's going to get even better by replicating what you've already done so that's the beauty of this particular method I'm just going again again neatly into that bottom building it up and work on this side now, this one. On the left hand side again, grading out to the light area there. That's good. And this one, again, we can work on this left hand side, again grading it into the highlight there and being very neat to just keep that little thin edge there. What we're going to do now, I'm changing my brush size to um, a two, and we're going to make, mix the sap green with transparent yellow for the sepals. We can mix that up. Again, we can go a little bit thicker on the mix because we've already decided where we're going as far as the um, form is concerned. So we can paint these in. And so again, these we can start and get into form. Much thicker paint. Again, accurate to the edge. And grade towards this light area to get the form. So we don't want to paint it all in the same tone. And so the back edge of this sepal will be darker because it's in complete shadow. So we can paint that in there because it's facing the right hand side in shadow. And as we come to this bend here, this will catch the light. So we need to just go darker on the bottom side and then the light catches the bend. So leave that lighter. Underneath here will be darker and then grade it out with your water into the highlight. So now I am going to carry on using this technique on the rest of the sepals. The next thing we're going to do is thicker paint just on this stem to build that up as well. Again, we need to grade that 
from the right hand side which is the shadow side with water again on the edge all the way down there water again on the edge so that the left hand side is much lighter and you can replicate that until it is just that bit darker so I'm just going under there's a little bit of the stem under there so I just need to paint that in as well it's only a little bit but it matters while this is damp I'll just run another wash down there of the thicker colour on the edge and that will complete the second procedure we're halfway through this painting join me in the next programme where we'll complete the water lily Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.